Hello book people, welcome to week two of my 52 books in 52 weeks reading challenge. This video is for prompt number 14, a character with superhuman ability. Unfortunately, the main character, Emma Donoghue, did not exactly meet this criteria. Much was made of her plainness, but her boss, on the other hand, turns out to be a significant deity. Let me read the blurb and author bio and let me explain. Action, intrigue, demons and dragons. Kylie Chang creates a fast and furious story balanced between the celestial and the mortal, the powerful and the innocent. Emma Donoghue has just started her new job as a nanny to Simone, the daughter of John Chen, a very rich Hong Kong businessman. She understands that Simone may be a target for kidnappers, but she does not expect to be drawn into a world of martial arts, magic and extreme danger, where both gods and demons can exist in the mortal domain. When John and his American bodyguard Leo teach Emma their particular style of martial arts, they began to realize that Emma herself is more than she seems. Kylie Chan has a Bachelor of Business in Information Technology, an MBA in Information Technology, and a Master of Philosophy in Creative Writing, researching new directions in self-publishing. Self -publishing. She started out as an IT consultant and trainer specializing in business intelligence systems in Australia, and then had her own consulting business for 10 years in Hong Kong. When she returned to Australia in 2002, Kylie studied martial arts and Buddhist and Taoist philosophy and wrote the best-selling nine-book Dark Heaven series, a fantasy homage of Chinese mythology and wuxia martial arts dramas. Her current work is the three-book Dragon Empire, a science fiction series. She is a full-time writer based in Queensland's Gold Coast. White Tiger, for me, is a two and a half out of a five star read. I think you can tell from the blurb why I thought it would be Emma Donoghue as a special character. However, she's merely human. Though perhaps I should keep in mind that this is only the first of many books. I'm really unaware if there is a deeper character development going on for her. Emma, as plain as she is, uh, does find herself in a very interesting world of Chinese mythology. The entire book is set in Hong Kong, seen through the eyes of Aussie Emma Donoghue. She came to Hong Kong to teach English, but quits when her employer asks Emma to gossip about one of her richest clients, which happens to be John Chan, father to Simone. Uh, when Emma tells Mr. Chen that she has quit, he offers her a full-time nanny position to care for the supernaturally gifted Simone. Only Emma is not told outright about the abilities of her ward. A white tiger has a few contradictions. Uh, in the first few chapters, I felt each character had a distinct voice, but I later felt that each character was quite static. The language is fast, it dispenses with a lot of needless description, but I wouldn't describe the story itself as fast. It was uh, slow in the way that in chapter two, uh, it began as Emma's routine with Simone and harassing Leo and Mr. Chan about Mr. Chan's mysterious business. By chapter five, there had been subtle changes, but was a but was still basically Emma's routine with Simone and harassing Leo and Mr. Chan about Mr. Chan's mysterious business. There isn't, there wasn't enough change to call it a fast story. Though I'd say that the pacing was quite consistent throughout. I was excited when the action started around chapter five, during ordinary outings with Emma and Simone and their bodyguard Leo, as Simone sort of started attracting these uh, demons and they needed to escape. I, I wouldn't go so far as to call White Tiger uh, a hard urban fantasy. It's certainly a soft fantasy genre, but that is 
set in our world or in Hong Kong. I've never been to Hong Kong, but online reviewers have complimented Kylie Chan's descriptions on some famous locales. I just feel I wish I could have discovered Hong Kong when Emma experienced it for the first time, though I am fully aware that my wish would actually slow the story down even more because Emma is at a level of awareness where she can look beyond just the touristy stuff and start noticing the deeper spiritual fabric of the place. I do realize this is just another contradiction that I'm dealing with. I loved that an Aussie got to have this kind of fantastical adventure in Hong Kong. Um, I love this quote uh, from, from the near the beginning of the novel. At only 28, I felt no great rush to settle into anything boring. That is a great line. Asia is practically our neighbour and yet still a world away in terms of culture, history and of course their gorgeous tapestry of mythology. Overall, I recommend it for bedside table readers. I mean, I'd highly recommend it to someone who only has time to read a chapter or two before lights out. I don't recommend this to binge readers. I feel that my low rating may be due to the fact that I need, needed to finish this so fast. This means that I could only see the repetitiveness and I didn't get the time to dwell on thinking about the deeper meanings about Chinese mythology. I'm going to love you and leave you and I, I have a great quote to end this video on. The serpent sleeps, buried in the silken mud at the bottom of the sea. The water is freezing and dark and suffocating. The serpent awakes and shifts, raising the mud in a floating cloud. The serpent cries. There is no answer.